Hello, YouTube. Another video. Nah. That hurt. Wow. Welcome back, honey. We're almost at 10,000 subscribers, and I would love to have you join us as well. Today, I have a very interesting video for you. We will make our very own jump shot hack for Counter Strike 2. This hack will mimic the jump shot, which means that you shoot at the highest peak of a jump, making it accurate. But we will make a program that times the peak for us. You only have to hold a hotkey and jump. This makes it possible to hit some crazy trick shots without even having to try. This video is part of a series on Counter Strike 2, so make sure to watch those as well if you find this interesting. If you subscribe, like, or write a comment, I would love to hear the next feature you want me to cover. You can also find the Discord server in the description. But remember, comply with the terms of service for the game you're coding hacks on. Many games permit it and it's essential to respect their guidelines. All Sweat C Sharp tutorials are designed with multiplayer disabled and this tutorial will precisely demonstrate how to achieve that. Now enjoy this tutorial. Welcome to yet another showcase. Here we have the final project C-Sharp console project that you will have when you reach the end of this tutorial. It's a very simple application that when we hold a hotkey and jump in the air, we will perform a shot. That's it. Let's take a look at it in game. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam. Under the game Counter Strike 2, we will right click on the properties, we will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, you can get banned otherwise. Inside the main menu, you can check that this is enabled by going into matchmaking, checking a map, and this window will come up saying that you have launched the game in Dash Insecure. Otherwise, do not run any applications that could get you banned. Here you can now instead go into practice and play with bots like this. All right, so in a practice game on Mirage, let's uh, showcase this jump shot hack. If we bring out the project and if all the offsets are updated and the logic is okay, we should be able to just Click play, and here, once we're in game, we hold the hotkey, oh, mouse 5, and we jump. Uh, it should shoot when we reach the maximum height. Would you look at that? Amazing. And you're here, and you want to jump shot this guy. Boom, headshot. Let's try it again. Yet again, we will create a new project, C Sharp Console App, with the .NET version 8. Now, because CS2 is 64 bit, we will set the project to be 64 bit. When we have matched architecture, 
we will install the sweat library sweat64. So with that done, we can actually start coding. We will initialize the sweat library, but we will need to be using sweat64. After that, we can create a new instance of the sweat class with the process ES2. And like always, we will get the client module pointer as well. But for this application, we will need some offsets. So let's go into A2X CS2 dumper. Credit goes to him for this beautiful dumper. We will navigate to the generated folder and the offsets.cs file. Here we will get the local player pawn offset, but also the force attack offset. When we have those two offsets, we will move into the client.dll.cs file and get the vec abs velocity offset and also the f flags offset. Remember to use the entity f flags and not the other one around. Now we will add some constants to understand what's going on. So the in R constant is a value that shows when our character is in the R, so we can compare that. We have plus and minus, which are just values that we force when we want to make an attack or force an action. At the end, we have the hotkey. This is just the value of the key that we will want to press. So you can get this from the Windows key codes to set it to whatever you want. You don't have to pick mine, mine is mouse 5. Okay, let's create the jump shot loop. We will set it to true in a while loop so it always runs. And the first thing we will do is to get the pawn address, our player's address. Then, because we have our player's address, we can read the current state of the player. We will use the F flag and read that value as an integer. Now, like I said before, we will compare this state to our in R constant to see if he's in the R. But we will also need our hotkey, so let's import that. This comes from the user32.dll and it's called getAsyncKeyState, which takes in an integer our hotkey. So this will check if we're pressing it and that we're in the air. So if that happens, if we hold the hotkey and we're in the air, we will sleep for a tenth of a second, then read the velocity of our player. Now remember, we're in the air at this point, so we will create a while loop that checks if we're within the height of the jump or when we lose velocity on the z-axis. So if it's greater than eight, 18 or below 18 minus in velocity dot z, it means we're still in momentum and we will not release the shot. Otherwise we do. So within this loop, if we haven't reached the peak yet, we will continue to read the velocity to update the values. Now if it breaks out of this loop, it means our velocity on the z-axis has died down or we have reached the top of the jump. If that's the case, we will continue the function and make a shot or shoot. So we will write to the dv force attack first the plus value to, pre to perform the attack, then minus to reset the attack. We will also add some sleep statements to help with the process smooth it out. Let's add a last further sleep in the outer loop to let the CPU rest. Let's try it out in game now. So before we run any application that manipulates the game's memory, we will go into Steam under the game Counter Strike 2. We will right click on the properties. We will add the launch option dash insecure. This is because without this, you can risk getting banned. Dash Insecure will disable VAC and we can play on our own without harming anyone else's experience. So we can't join the normal matchmaking, but we can sit in a practice game all to ourselves and test our applications. So incredibly important, you can get banned otherwise. All right, so we're inside of a practice game on Mirage with a bot on the opposite team, and let's try our jumper shot hack. So 
if everything is correct, logic and the offsets are updated, when we run the application and we hold our hotkey, it's a mouse 5 at default, and jump, it should shoot when we reach the maximum height. You can see that it shoots directly when it's supposed to. Interesting. Have made. And fun.